Hello, I'm Juliana Foster. And I'm McKenna Palazza. Welcome to TMN Television on Thursday, November 16th. Tonight we look at the beginning of International Education Week. Also, stay tuned to look at the volleyball team win last Friday. These stories and more tonight on TMN Television. You don't want to miss this. Truman State University's annual International Education Week takes place this Monday to Friday. International Education Week is a collaborative effort by the Center of Inter for International Students, the Multicultural Affairs Center, the Center for International Education Abroad, the Peace Corps, and the Health Science Department, among others. This week features many activities that teach students about international cultures. This year, there was International Idol, a cultural talent show in Baldwin Auditorium, a night in Africa, a dinner with a African Students Association in the sub-Georgian rooms, and a class where students can learn how to make sushi, egg rolls, and sauce in the sub-down under. There was also a screening of the film Girl Rising in Baldwin Hall 114, followed by a faculty panel discussion on international education. One of the most popular events of the week, Dance Explosion, happened yesterday in the Baptist Student Union. Students learn cultural dances from various groups on campus, including the African Students Association, Namaste Nepal, and iClub. Tomorrow is the last day of International Education Week. The last event will be Perspectives, a panel discussion where international students weigh in on the current social and political climate on campus and in the world. Perspectives is hosted by the MAC at 7 p.m. in Magruder 1000. All of the events are free to students. Faculty and staff are currently working to create a new banner system that allows students to register for courses based upon themes and not departments. Information Technolo Technology Services, or ITS, showed staff a prototype for the new system at the November 9th Undergraduate Council meeting. Students would be able to search for subjects they are interested in, and the system would suggest classes for them. In its early stages, the system would only suggest courses in the Liberal Studies program, as those are required for students. Next Steps Team 5 developed the program to help students. The original team was responsible for identifying various themes that could be applied to a variety of courses and help students find classes from other areas of study. There are currently eight themes, each containing a cluster of classes. The physical body, self-identity, human beings as individuals, human beings as groups, the human experience, abstract thought and evaluation of knowledge, the man-made world, and the natural world. The price of health insurance policies for Truman State University employees will rise 16% next year due to a number of large claims that have increased the cost of the program. In 2012, Truman became a self-insured university, allowing the university more control when setting rates for employees. This self-funded approach saves the university money in the long run because of after a good year with few claims, it can build cushion and prepare for a year with many claims. Truman was partnered with insurance company Aetna and Gallagher Consultant Consulting Services for several years to design plans and determine projection costs for the following calendar year. Sally Herleth, Executive Director of Human Resources, says Truman health insurance rates have had no increase in the last two years. However, because of multiple large claims, including one of around $50,000 made this year by employees, the university has no choice but to raise the rates to help manage the cost. Currently, $70,000 in foundation scholarships for students waiting to study abroad are available for 2018. Though the general scholarships close November 3rd, study abroad scholarships are open now. Any student can apply as long as they fit the criteria of the scholarship they are applying for. Most of the study abroad scholarships are financial based, which requires students to fill out the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA. Foundation scholarships are made available by donations from alumni and other donors. There are more than 500 foundation scholarships to meet the needs of diverse po population of students. Scholarship recipients are chosen by a panel of staff and faculty. To apply for foundation scholarships, students can follow the foundation scholarship link under the Student Finances tab on Truview. Truman State University's Student Activities Board is looking to restructure itself to allow more oversight and accountability to the student body. The organization operates with a budget of almost $300,000 from student fees and employs 30 to 35 students. The board started as a subcommittee of the Student Senate working with a university-funded $25,000 budget until 1992. SAB has since grown into its role today of bringing diverse programming and entertainment to Truman's campus. The organization is, looking, is working to become more transparent and receptive to the student body, 
in part because of a report by the Organizational Activities Fee Review Committee. SAB President Senior Blake Boothad said the organization is considering changing its laws to allow the student body to vote on parts of SAB's constitution. SAB is also looking into doing more surveys, expanding the number of members, creating a terms of operations, and finding ways to collaborate with other organizations. Kirksville is experiencing an economic boom to, due to new businesses in the area. Carolyn Christman, Kirksville Regional Economic Development Inc. Director, says key sectors in the Kirksville community have increased employment, including education, medical care, and manufacturing. In addition to the key sectors, Kirksville has experienced a boom in retail, hospitality, and food outlets, but more are expected. A local Marshalls, Menards, Arby's, and Hampton Hotel are just a few establishments in the development. Kirk Christman says there have been some closures in the area, including Hastings and Payless shoe stores, but more developments have occurred than closures. Along with the large stores, small local businesses are expected to rise in Kirksville. K-Ready business counselor Anastasia Tiedman says when the city is experiencing a boom, it creates excitement and motivation for local businesses to start. Tiedman says every dollar earned at a local business stays in the community for about seven exchanges and supports the local economy. Assistant City Manager Ashley Young says the bulk of the businesses will be along Baltimore Street, but there is a revitalization effort in downtown Kirksville. The city expects to see a decrease in, an un in unemployment and higher wages. Kirksville City Council members reviewed the proposed 2018 budget last Monday. The Kirksville Police Department is looking at an increase of $300,000. The city plans on adding four new police officers to the KPD. The yearly wages of the current officers will see an increase under the new budget, except for the police lieutenant, deputy police chief, and police chief. Officials stated that the major majority of the funds will go towards new officers' equipment, training, and uniforms. Next, stay tuned for a look at the latest in sports. But before that, let's look at this week's forecast. A wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smokey is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good start. Next, another drink. Next and finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. The Truman State University volleyball team's win last Friday against Missouri University of Science and Technology marks, marked its 17th of the season. This allowed them to secure the seventh seed in the GLVC tournament. Starting tomorrow when they face the second seeded McKendree University, the win also secured head coach Ben Briney's 200th career win. Briney became the head coach in 2009 after spending four years as an assistant under the previous coach, Jason Scoach. Briney said Scoach encouraged him to apply for the position when he left and taught him invaluable insight to use in Briney's coaching. Briney says Scoach was always very detail-oriented and emphasized the importance of mastering fundamentals to finding success. Since he started his tenure as a head coach, he says he has shifted his philosophy, realizing that coaching is a process and that mistakes help players grow. In order to get those wins or losses, we have to be willing to go, okay, I made a mistake. What can I learn from that mistake and how can I fix it? Not, hey, you made a mistake, here's a consequence. It's, all right, what can you do to fix that mistake? What, what didn't go right, what did go right? The men's basketball team began their season last Saturday with a stretch of five games in eight days. The Bulldogs won the opening game against Trevecca Nazarene University, 84-73. to Redshirt senior Zach Fisher recorded a double-double in his first career start, scoring 24 points and grabbing 11 rebounds. Three other Bulldogs also had double figures in points, including junior guard Jake Felke's 23. Fisher came close to another double-double in the second game against Cedarville University, while Velke led the team with 22 points in 17 minutes. Assistant coach Mike Anise says the coaching staff makes sure the players properly conditioned and treated before and after every game. He also says the team has a two-hour study hall period four times a week to make sure everyone keeps up with their schoolwork. The Bulldogs will play their fourth game tomorrow against Upper Iowa University and fifth against the highest ranked Division II team, Northwest University State University, this Saturday. 
The women's basketball team entered this season with the motto of unfinished business after its previous season ended in a dramatic fashion at the conference tournament. Senior forward Sam Andrews says this has served as motivation for the team going into this season. The Bulldogs were victorious in their season and home opener against Missouri Valley College 75-65 to on Saturday. 77-65. to Redshirt junior Brooke Bailey had 16 points, too short of her career high, and sophomore guard Sloan Tata had 11 points. The team followed with a 72-57 to loss on Monday night against Augustana College. Freshman center Katie Josekis recorded her first collegiate double-double, scoring 12 points and grabbing 13 rebounds. Assistant coach Thea Dean says the team has six seniors and will look to capitalize on that leadership so the team can improve in, team, in time to play its best later in the season. The Bulldogs will return home Saturday to face Missouri Southern State University. The football team will finish their 2017 season with a 5-6 overall record and a 4-3 conference missing the postseason. The Bulldogs still did end their season on a high note, winning the last four games, including the final game Saturday against McKendree University, 17-14. While the team won by only three points, it tripled the Bearcats in time of possession and rushing yards. Sophomore running back Jordan Salima set a new record high with 194 pushing yards, making him the 20th Bulldog running back with 1,000 yards in a season. Sophomore defensive end Sam Reeves had his second season of at least 10 sacks with 11.5 sacks. Reeves is 10 away from the Bulldog career record. Senior defensive back Ben Chaney says the team improvised, improved all three phases of its game in the second half of the season. Chaney says he will always cherish his experience as a Bulldog and hopes the younger players mature quickly to bounce back next season. This has been your Truman Sports Update. Stay tuned after the break. It's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself. And I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on Wheel, coming to my door as someone who's housebound, assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight. For complete news coverage, be sure to stay tuned to KTRM and pick up a copy of the index. Check our news content on tmn.truman.edu and be sure to check out our variety show segments. You can also follow TMN on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for breaking news updates. And if you missed part of our broadcast tonight, check out TMN TV on YouTube. If you've ever thought about being on TV, be sure to head, over, head on over to tmn.truman.edu slash apply to fill out an application today. From all of us at TMN, thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of the week.